Loader up and up and running, and um, I can load up Arduino. The code is fairly simple. I spent an inordinate amount of my life watching a blue line cross the screen, and I come to realize. All right, I'm going to open up one of the sample programs. And now all I should have to do is tell it what kind of board I have, compile it, and press the button on the Tensi and it will uh, load that program and I should be good to go. Also, not only what board type you have to tell it, but also what kind of uh, USB device you want to emulate. Paul set it up with, so you can emulate different types of USB devices. For instance, you can do a keyboard mouse, but you can also do like an SD card adapter. And you can also do a serial interface if you just want to talk to the thing over serial and don't want to use any keyboard functionality at all. Now that's not going to be something that's going to be used in this project, but for future projects I want to do, uh, I think I might very well uh, be using that functionality. Does, I want to make my own, uh, who has seen aliens? You got a little sentry gun that shoots all the aliens? Or I want to make a zombie defense gun that does much the same thing. I want a heat sensor, I want it to detect motion, and then I want it to say, okay, is it hot or not? If it's cold and it's moving, it's a zombie. Fire. <laughs> so I'm thinking about using the uh, serial interface stuff for that. But once I have all those settings in, I tell it what COM port I'm using, I compile it, and I go. And hopefully it gets more interesting from here, but I want people to know how simple it was to set up the environment. And the Arduino programming language, you saw my examples up there. Once you uh, go through them a little bit, they're really not hard to follow at all, at least in my personal opinion. Now let's do a little bit of a device demo. I currently have a few different devices set up. You saw, um, okay, you saw this one here a second ago. This is the mouse I've Trojan with some extra storage and a hub inside. Did some soldering, put the Tensi in there. And essentially, it's made to be as a gag gift. I mean, it does its, all these pretty color things and so forth. But I could set it to go off via the caps lock um, trap. Instead of using caps lock for the sake of this video, what I've done is set it up to go off whenever it sees scroll lock hit. Because it's, you know, anymore, people don't use scroll lock, at least I don't, a whole lot. I'm going to have to put down the microphone to actually do this, though. But I could easily be caps lock or num lock, and essentially it'll just sit there and wait for that to fire off. And when it sees that that value has changed, try that again. Hopefully, it's supposed to be seeing that it's changed. It's possible I'm in live demo hell again. Anyway, it sits there and waits for the keyboard to, s to have some change in value, and once it does, fires off its payload. I'll give this one more shot before I. There you go. It just fired it off in the background, and. It started copying all the files on my desktop to the onboard storage and it then shrank down the current active window, which I screwed up by clicking on the wrong window right afterwards. But if I go back here and bring that window back up, what it did basically did was fire off a script on the onboard thumb drive to uh, start copying everything from my desktop, which might have interesting information, to the onboard storage. Then the person can come around later on and collect this device. And the scripts I've written for that are uh, fairly easy. But uh, essentially what it does is where the current logged in user, it, um, it creates some extra folders on the drive and uh, for instance I was logged into a different name, it would make a different folder and that folder would contain all the stuff off the person's desktop. So that's one example of a payload and that's one I use that I can trigger via um, scroll lock and whatnot. Let me back up a little bit. Now a more interesting one and one I have more advanced payloads for is this little device. Now this one I used a Tensi++ on just because I wanted, well, because Paul sent me one and I could uh, attach more pins to it. So let me go ahead and bring this one up. I'm assuming this mic is live also. Groovy. All right. Now for these demos, I've set things up. to where I use this one button to trigger everything. Not because I have to, 
in real life you'd want to have either fire off by timer, by lighting conditions, or as um, Mr. Elkin showed just a bit ago, feel like an RF trigger. But for the sake of demoing at DEF CON, I figured it would be easier for me to know exactly when my demo code was going to run by setting this button. I also have a 9 pin uh, dip switch on this thing. I can set to uh, 512 different possible programs using that, but I pretty much have each individual dip set to do one particular function just for convenience. Now I mentioned that uh, show diagnostics. That's what I have basically set on the first pin. The reason I have it that way is I can sit there and look and uh, it makes it quick for me to figure out what might be going wrong with my program based on the current value of each pin and uh, what the analog value is. This one has a little photoresistor that I mentioned before and I'll show how we're using that here in a bit. But the most important thing is I keep forgetting what particular functionality I have on which pin so I went ahead and added those comments in there. And pin one is show dialog. But let's use some of the other ones. Pin two is go to my website. And let me hope that I actually have an internet commit, uh, connection here. And let's also hope that Chris Padgett hasn't figured out CDMA uh, hacking yet. All right, let's see if this is epic fail or not. It's acting like it's connecting to something. All right, in theory, that should open up a web browser. Oh, I'm sorry, that first one is not open up a web browser. The first one is open up Notepad and say Aiden was here. That's a fairly simple thing to do. Essentially, it just uses that command, open a command bar and run something function that I mentioned before. Let's go ahead and try dip position three. That one opens up the web browser and uh, goes to imgeek.com, which may or may not fail depending on whether I have an active internet connection right now. I appear too. Now you can use this for like if you notice a uh, <laughs> thank you a drive-by zero day out there, you could have it set to automatically go out to some website. Also, if you wanted to go out to some website and start uploading stuff from the person's machine, you would use that kind of functionality. But uh, I'm going to shrink that down right now and let's go to the next thing. Oh, set caps lock trap. I'm going to uh, turn off that one, turn on number four. Essentially what this does is it starts annoying the user until they uh, turn caps lock off. Then you know for sure someone's actually at the keyboard. So let me fire off the caps lock trap. All right, I'm just the average user typing along. Hey, I'm shouting at everybody. What am I supposed to do? All right, so I turn off caps lock and it fires off the script that I had set. And essentially it just tells you what it could have done. And I have wood wrap turned off so you don't see it all but just type something different into notepad. All right. Let's see if we have anything else more interesting than that. Ooh. Be more interesting if it was a bank account but you know Facebook will work also. All right. This one essentially what it's going to do is it's going to open up the mobile version of uh, Facebook. It was just so much easier to script the right number of tabs to get the right spot in the forms if I use the mobile version because it was just a lot less complex to look at. Essentially you can have this paid off go off by time or some other thing like the light functionality I'm going to show shortly. It goes out to Facebook, hits the right number of tabs, gets itself to the right position and makes a post. <laughs> it could be some other kind of transaction as well but I just happened to decide to do Facebook. Thank you. Um, let me see what was the number one I had on there. This is just to get your brain a working on a what you could possibly use this for. Oh, to find my drive by its name, my thumb, and start copying stuff to it. I pretty much always show that with the Trojan mouse. I think uh, Dave and Josh tomorrow may have a Trojan keyboard they're going to be bringing with them. I'm not sure. I haven't actually seen the presentation yet because I didn't go to Black Hat. Um, and I got there a little bit late for B-sides. All right, brightness detection. Oh yeah, that one's fun. We'll go ahead and do that one. Seven, 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 seven. All right, for that, for that I'm gonna need some, fr some freaking lasers. With no shocks necessarily attached. <laughs> Though if anybody happens to have any shocks in the audience, bring them on up and we can try. All right. Essentially the light detection just detects the amount of light in the area. I was telling you you could trigger it by environmental conditions. This could also be a, like a thermistor and you can do it via heat. But essentially I press the button 
and it says the lights seem to be on because I'm sitting here in a fairly brightly lit section of the uh, room. I'm going to cover the photoresistor, do it again. <laughs> Let's try this again. You know, it's distinctly possible that I destroyed something in the process of building this bad boy. It happens. That's why it's always good to bring backup. Hold on a second. Hopefully I have the exact same program loaded on this particular unit. Oh, another thing I've been doing is making those little Trojan devices. You see the little things flashing? This is the unit that uh, I recently was at a meeting with Tenacity and uh, I had this embedded in a wolf's head because our logo is a wolf. So you put this in the eyes and make it flash and so forth. Uh, but hopefully I have all the right stuff set in it to act as a demo for this. Let's go ahead and one. All right, brightness detection. Yes, that's number seven on this particular unit. Let's see if this one blows up in my face or not. All right, brightness detection. Do it. Lights are on. That's expected. I'm scared of the dark because I got it covered. <laughs> it's possible I even have an open and a short on that. It's causing that analog read to always read the same thing. I may have screwed that up and jostling it all around on the plane here. And that was light to dark and uh, let's get a little bit more creative. <laughs> and that's, gentlemen, is why it's always good to bring back up. But I also have a payload on there and I think you may have saw that one in the listing when I did my diagnostic called motion sensor. And essentially all it's doing is using the photoresistor where it sees a change in the value of light. Because generally, you know, if someone moves, a shadow happens, something gets rearranged, light reflects differently, it's a great way to detect motion. So when it detects some kind of change, it should, oh, actually I have the wrong one there. I'm not using all the nine pins on this one. motion detected, you can have it fire off some other payload. The payload I have just types out into notepad. But you can just as easily have it add an account, uh, make one of those transactions that I mentioned before, just a ton of different things. All right, I'm going to unplug that bad boy. And now we can go back to the slide part. Assuming I can find it amongst all the windows that I now have open. There we go. All right. Demo units. The first time I made a demo unit, and anybody wants to see these after the uh, main part of the talk, come on up and I'll show them to you. The first one I made was in an Altoids tin. And I've also tried uh, directly soldering the uh, dip switches onto the tensi, but that makes it hard to repurpose and I like to use my tensi for other things like 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, I like to use it for other purposes like controlling servos and whatnot. So I decided to start doing these things like shields. Essentially, I make it so I can just solder on uh, sockets. Not to mention sockets are much cheaper. I'd much rather burn out a thirty dollar, uh, sorry, thirty cent component than like a eighteen dollar component. So I solder those on, and I can actually start making shields. I can pop on and off for different functionality, like you see right here. Oh, by the way, that the adapter I got, I think it's the same adapter that uh, Mr. Elkins was using. Um, Got it from Deal Extreme for dirt cheap. It's about the smallest one I can find. If you break it apart, you can actually make it a little bit smaller by getting rid of that plastic casing. Also, I have versions that uh, there is an SD card adapter, so you can make it read a uh, micro SD card and use that instead of uh, any kind of flash drive. The problem is the Tensi operates at 1.1 USB speeds, which is perfectly fine for a mouse and keyboard. It's not going to be going any faster than that, anyways. But it is kind of a limitation for micro SD. So I'm hoping that uh, Paul's going to implement some more stuff at the lower level of the 10 